Today we are stepping up our baking game with some fall flavors and we are taking regular old cinnamon rolls and turning them into apple cider cinnamon rolls. This is gonna be so, so good. I cannot wait to eat these, so let's get started. First, let's get started with our dish's namesake and heat up some apple cider. We're going to proof our yeast in this, so you want it just over 100 degrees to give your yeast a boost. You don't need to get it to an exact temperature, just keep it below 110 or your cider will become a yeast death trap. Sprinkle on your yeast and set it aside to let it foam up. At the same time, you can melt your butter, which you want to let cool a bit before adding to your dough. We'll let both of those sit for about 10 minutes. While we're waiting, into a medium bowl, we're adding our granulated sugar, our room temperature egg, and our vanilla. Once your butter is cool and your yeast is nice and foamy, you can add those as well, whisking everything together before setting it aside. Now in the bowl of a stand mixer, we're going to add four cups of flour, reserving the last half cup for adjustments if needed. Sprinkle in your salt and give it a quick mix before adding your wet ingredients. I actually like to give this a quick fold before allowing the dough hook to do its thing, since the hook isn't great at incorporating ingredients. We'll knead this on low for a good seven to 10 minutes. If you don't have a stand mixer, you can still make this dough, you're just going to have to knead for about double that time, which sounds like a pain, but it'll also help you work off the calories of at least half of one of these rolls. What you're looking for is a cohesive dough that's still a bit tacky, but is pulling away from the sides of the bowl. If it's still looking way too loose after about seven minutes, go ahead and add up to half a cup of flour to help it come together. Mine was fine, so I stuck to the four cups. Lightly oil a bowl and turn the dough out into it to proof. If your house is on the colder side, and like 99.9% .9 of the people in the world, you don't have a proofing drawer, Turn your oven on its lowest setting for about two minutes, then don't forget to turn it off before putting your dough in there. This is my version of a proofing drawer. It's not perfect, but it works better than nothing. You want to see a nice doubling in size. That might take an hour, it might take two, it really depends on a lot of factors from your yeast to the warmth and the humidity in the air. Go by size, not by the time. Once the dough is proofed, scrape it out into a lightly floured work surface. We want to roll this out into a rectangle. The actual dimensions of the rectangle don't matter too much, but you want to make sure the short side is at least a foot long, hopefully a little bit more than that, and the dough is about a quarter inch thick. Thinner dough equals more cinnamon swirls. Be sure to check as you go to make sure your dough is not sticking to the work surface. Stop and add a little more flour if it does. Now it's time for the filling. Before I get started, let's avoid the simple mistake I made in my cranberry swirl bread video. You see how the top isn't exactly attached there? It's kind of coming off. That's because they applied the filling all the way to the top of the dough. So to fix that, leave about a one inch space where you don't put any filling. Apply the butter first. You want this fully room temp so that it spreads easily. Next, the apple butter. What I'm using is an extra dark apple butter from last week's video. I should have warmed this up so it was a little easier to work with, but I didn't. So I had to ride the struggle bus for a couple minutes until I got it evenly distributed. Rumble, rumble, bump and roar. The struggle bus is at your door. Finally, you can add the cinnamon and sugar, which you want to have mixed before sprinkling like this. Now carefully roll the buns, nice and tight, into a log. Cut off the ends. I like to use a serrated knife with very little pressure to minimize the smooshage. Now cut the log into 12 equally thick pieces. Place those into a prepared nine by 13 pan or six each into two round nine inch cake pans. Either one works. Just make sure it is generously coated in either butter or baking spray. Now if you're type A personality who plans well and is making these for the next day, now is the time you stop, cover these and place them in your refrigerator overnight. But if you're like me and you want the yummy thing right away, we're just going to let these proof at room temperature for about another hour or until they look like this. Before these go into the oven, this is optional, but it really does bring your buns to the next level. Pour in one half a cup of heavy cream in between the buns. Now pop these into a preheated 375 degree oven and set your timer for 20 minutes. That's when you should check on them, not when they should be done. While that's in the oven, you can make your frosting. All of what I'm about to do can be done by a whisk and or spatula, but I have this machine to do it for me, so I'm going to use it. Toss in the cream cheese and brown butter. Again, these ingredients should be room temperature before working with them. Give that a good beating on high for two to three minutes before adding your cinnamon, vanilla, cider, and salt. Finally, add the powdered sugar a bit at a time, mixing in between each addition until you get this consistency. Don't forget to sift the powdered sugar before adding it or you'll get some lumps in your glaze. Give your rolls a quick check after 20 minutes, then check to determine how much more time they need. You want nice, toasty, light brown tops. Mine took about 23 minutes to look like this. Now, I know the temptation to eat these right away, but they will have to cool before adding the glaze, or all of it will just run off the sides, looking thin and sad. So, yes, this was a high maintenance treat. Especially if you made the apple butter yourself, it probably took you multiple days. But what you're left with is this buttery bun with a gooey, apple-y filling, topped with a smooth, creamy, luscious glaze that will impress even the snobbiest of culinary enthusiasts. I really hope you give this a try soon. In the meantime, please like this video, 
subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you next time.